audio control cars, electric power to the wheels. Arc Escapes reviews, Arc Escapes builds. Arc Escapes modifies RC testing around the track. Arc Escapes discovers what they boast and what they lack. Steering cars remotely, building better machines. Testing cars around the track, remote wheel spinning dreams. Radio control, little cars that rock and roll. Race them in the dirt, race them on the sand. Race them on the road, any surface on the land. Hey up, how do? This is Chris. Thanks for turning that dial and tuning in. And uh, today I'm going to do a video that's a little bit different than normal. Normally I do videos about architecture and stuff because that's what I do for a living. Uh, but this video is going to kind of hop back to my childhood a bit. Um, I just want to do something a little different. I thought, hey, let's look in the attic, see what I can find. And uh, so I went up there and opened up a box and I found this car in the box, in the shape that you see it now, which is not very good. It is all in bits. Uh, I don't know what I did back then, uh, but I never put this thing back together. I probably wrecked it, and then I probably just didn't bother with it anymore. Uh, but now I'd like to kind of uh, bring it back to life. Be Dr. Frankenstein, create my, create my new monster. Uh, and so here we are, and this is what we're going to do. And I don't know what all these parts are, um, this looks like a roll cage. Um, as you know from the title of the video, this is actually a Tamiya Hot Shot, uh, which was the second uh, radio controlled car I ever bought. Uh, I was a big Tamiya fan, which is a company uh, in Japan, and uh, they make model kits, and then you make the kit into a full running radio controlled car. How about that then? That's pretty cool. Uh, it's not one of those off the shelf toys. This is actually kind of more of a advanced toy. Let's put it that way. Uh, and a lot of adults use them too still. And, um, and here I am doing it. But um, it's not in good shape. It really isn't. Um, it's actually more complicated. Or it looks more complicated than set of my plans for a house. Um, Let's call this video like the architecture of an RC hotshot or something, because that's what it is. It's, it's really the architecture of a radio controlled car. What goes in it? How is it made? Um, how do the parts go together? Um, I don't have any of the old plans, so I don't know what I'm gonna do there. Um, uh, roll cage here, got the Tamiya kind of crest on here, which I remember when I was a kid. Um, this looks like, um, this right here looks like the front suspension here of the car. Maybe this is the rear suspension here, just because it's separate from the, the front of the car here, which is what I'm guessing. And I think this is, of course, the chassis, which holds the uh, electrical equipment. There's the servo that kind of does the steering. Of course, it doesn't do much steering right now. And this is the top of the, uh, the hot shot right here uh, with uh, the race car driver here. His name was Crash Kramer. Yes, that was the sticker that you had to put on the set, or it came with it. Uh, that was his name. And look, it's even got an old retro aerial. I'm sure we don't need that anymore, so that will probably be coming off. But it really isn't in good shape. So I'm going to do my best and uh, take you through this journey of bringing this automobile to life. Oh, check out this. So I actually stopped uh, racing these cars in college, in university. So this is the latest body I had for it. The original body was actually red. If you remember on the hot shot, uh, this is actually a body that I painted orange and blue. And I guess that's why all of these parts that were, I think, red originally are painted blue to kind of go with the orange and blue paint scheme that I, that I changed this car to, looks like. Um, and that's because I actually went to this school, Auburn University. So War Eagle, War Eagle. to all you Auburn fans out there. And if not, well then, just super Petrino's Auburn people, isn't it? Uh, 
but that's it. That's why it's orange and blue with the Auburn stickers. And uh, the body looks like it's not in good shape either. It's been taped together. I did some uh, what you call bashing, which is just running in a parking lot or dirt lots or in the fields. I must have done a lot of bashing with this because it's not in good shape. So let's get to it. Ugh. My God, what am I getting into? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to um, put together these uh, gearboxes or repair them or fix them. Uh, I don't know how bad a shape they're in. Um, oh, this one actually just came loose. I think this is the rear gearbox. So open this out and looks like we got a loose wheel in here. That's not good. Um, so, uh, God, this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. Uh, maybe I'm above my head on this. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, the rear gearbox here. Uh, the shell looks kind of okay. Um, this shell uh, is the front gearbox here, and it looks like I've uh, really damaged this one. So I'm going to have to see if I can find a replacement shell of this one online. Uh, because this one looks like it's been broken and I've used JB Weld. Do you remember that? It's kind of that glue that welds plastic together. Um, we used it a lot back in the RC days uh, to fix everything when we bash them. Um, so let's crack open this thing and see if I can do it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So the gears look, uh, look fine inside, but really the outer casing is um, pretty crap. Uh, need to kind of uh, maybe get some new ones um, and uh, maybe uh, I don't know this one looks okay but it's got some band-aids on it so maybe I need to get a new a new casing for this too so um, as I'm building this thing I'm realizing or looking at this thing on the table here that I'm gonna need quite a few uh, uh, new parts I have looked through this kit here on, on here that I've got it looks like I've got some damaged uh, suspension arms too See right here, JB Weld again, and a JB Weld again here. So this is just no good. Um, this is just gonna break again. Look, even that is broken. Look, look at that. It's breaking literally in my hands, this piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take account of what I've got here, and I'm going to um, see what's broke and see what's not broke, and then I'm gonna go online and see if I can find any of these parts. I'd probably go on Amazon or eBay um, and look. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do, is look carefully at my set and see what's broke or damaged and order those parts. Because I don't want to wait for them, I wanna get this thing fixed. So I wanna order them all at one time. Um, let's keep going. Tamiya. So here's my handy dandy iPad. Um, I got this so I could actually see how to put this monstrosity together. Uh, make it easier for me. So uh, this is actually showing me, this is actually a PDF file of the old instructions. So if you've got one of these classic cars and you want to know how to fix it, you can find anything online. Just I just punched in Tamiya Hotshot uh, instruction manual and this popped up. And uh, so this is telling me how to assemble the car. So this is a great help. So like I said, I've started off with these uh, gear boxes right here, and I've also some of the new parts have arrived. So I thought it's time to put together maybe one of the gear boxes. So this gear box that's shown here is actually the front gear box. So we're going to put this together to start assemble this. I've already gotten a little bit done, but I uh, wanted to show you about how some of it goes together. So let, let's, let's put some more of these little wheels or cogs within the gear box, shall we? So here we go. Here's uh, the front gearbox so far. Uh, what I did do is, uh, like I said, I wanted to kind of retro mod this. And so these were the old, um, the old ball bearings right here. Um, all rusted up. I guess they got wet and they're rusted and they don't, they don't, they're not really free moving. So I got rid of these. These came with the kit. And then I've got these kind of hop up ball bearings. Um, I think they're by Racing Edge right here, Racing Edge specially made for the hot shot. Who knows if things like this existed? Pretty cool stuff. And they come a little tube like this, very handy. Um, also, I kind of like blue. These ball bearings have got blue inside right here. But these are the ball bearings that I'm gonna use uh, for, the, uh, for the gearboxes here. 
So I'm gonna replace all the ball bearings uh, on this car to these new ball bearings uh, so that everything will move freer uh, because all the old ones just rusted up. Uh, so as you can see, I've already installed these blue ball bearings in the front gearbox right here and I've started assembling the cogs or the wheels. I don't know what you call them, but anyway, that's what they are. Um, and then using this diagram right here and it looks like um, telling me where the parts go. Uh, I don't know how to follow this, but um, I think that this part goes... Um, um, okay, let me get back to you. Okay, all right. So here is the new front transmission box. I have reused some parts like these uh, axle hubs right here. Uh, as you can see, here's the old one and then here's the new. Uh, this one's all brand new, better than new in fact, because I put the new ball bearings in, the upgraded ball bearings and everything. But one thing I recommend doing is before you really tighten this down is to try the four wheel drive system. This here is the four wheel drive shaft of the hot shot right here. It's got some hex bolts on each side. And then what you want to do is you want to take this and place that in here, into the hole like this, into the hole, into the hole, like that, and then twist it, right? Now when you twist it, these axles, do you see them rotating right there? Those should rotate, okay? And the same one on the other side should rotate at the same rate. Now, if you put your finger on one like this and hold it in place, the other one should still rotate until it kind of stops where it's hard to kind of go any further. That's called a slip differential. So that's the slip differential system of this transmission. So here it is. The front transmission box is done. Put this to the side. And now we're gonna work on this old one here. And then here I've got the new casing right here. And uh, let's get to work on putting the gears in and getting the rear transmission box done. Okay, I've got the, uh, the rear gearbox done and uh, once again to check it, I'll take my uh, handy dandy four wheel drive shaft of the Hot Shot and I'll put it in the back here which is going to attach to the front uh, transmission box. So I'll put it in here and let's see if, uh, let's see if these to go around. Oh yeah, that works out good. And on the other side, yep, it goes at the same rate as well. You can second see it rotate here. And if I put my finger on one, the other one will move around just a little bit. It's got a slip differential, so that's good. Uh, so yeah, rear box is done. I won't say that was easy, that was pretty hard. Especially those little O-ring clips that go on the other side of this axle to hold this in place. I did not like those, no. But anyway, the rear box is done. It's greased, lubed, and it's ready for the motor. Now, as for the motor, I would normally put a reedy motor in, but I thought I'd go a little bit different on this one. I wanted some kind of color scheme on the Hot Shot, and um, I just didn't want a black motor, and I wanted a little bit faster motor on this one. And so instead of a reedy, I've got this motor right here. I don't know anything about it, right here. It's called a Surpass Hobby Brushless, brushed, uh, brushless uh, power system, and uh, uh, it's, Looks like quite a nice motor. Uh, it got great reviews on Amazon.com, which is where I got it. Um, got fantastic reviews, said it was super fast. And uh, I put a, uh, a pinion gear that matches the gearing ratio 
in my transmission box on this. So now I have to put this on the gearbox at this stage. So I've got the little pins in here. And then here we go, we're gonna put this in here like so. And we're gonna hold it in place and get the screwdriver, here we go. And then we're gonna screw it in place here. Yeah, it's coming along. But doesn't that look great? And it's good to put the motor on at this stage, so then you can be sure that the pinion of the motor shaft engages with the gears of the gearbox here. So, what we've got here, the rear transmission box is done, or gearbox, and then the front box is done. So here we go. The finished product on the gearboxes. Um, I think this was, I hope this was the hardest part of the car because uh, I personally thought this was really hard, uh, but we got it done. So let's keep going. Maybe we'll do the suspension next, eh? Okay, let's go. So what I'm tackling now is I am redoing or replacing the uh, the rear wishbone suspension here of the Hot Chop. So uh, this is the old version, and you can see where it's all been welded together with uh, JB Weld, which I think is absolutely horrible stuff. Uh, but it's all over this. I mean, this is just no good and also it's painted blue too I don't want I don't want blue anymore uh, so we're gonna put together the new arms so here are the new pieces right here these are the new pieces right here so the new pieces here too and then I'm gonna put some of this old stuff on the new pieces add these then come up with a whole new rear wishbone suspension
Well, this is a little bit harder than I thought. Uh, it's harder than just doing the kit from scratch because I'm taking parts from the old hotshot and combining them with new parts. Um, so, but I'm coming along okay, coming along okay. I've got the uh, Y-bone arms here. I guess that's what they're called here. They articulate up in the up and down direction individually here with the axle and everything. So uh, the rear chassis part is um, uh, almost complete. Okay, so now it's time to get all the electronics ready to install into the hotshot. And before I do that, I like to lay everything out on the table here so that then I can see if everything works, if the speed controller works, the receiver works, bind everything, set the speed controller to the motor and just see if everything is A-OK. -okay. I just don't like doing all that stuff when it's actually in the car. So I prefer to do it all laid out here. And it's very easy to do it when it's laid out. And then this is the brushless motor. I'm keeping it all reedy. Uh, if you remember, I originally was gonna put this in the uh, hot shot, but I found that these connectors don't work and it's honestly, the torque doesn't seem to be very good on this motor. Just need a fast motor. So it just, I'm just gonna stick with reedy products. Always the best. So here we are. This is all the electronics nicely laid out on the table, so it's a lot easier to hook up rather than trying to hook it up in the hotshot buggy. And uh, so what we got here is we've got the receiver here, which has to be bound to this Sanyo receiver right here. And instead of buying the very expensive Sanyo receiver, I have found this uh, substitute called the ARX482R. This works really good and is half the price as the Sanyo receiver that you would normally buy for this here, this uh, MTS system. And so from this receiver, channel one right here goes to the steering servo, which is right here, okay? So we've got to double check that. And these also fittings here, these plugs fit a lot better into these slots than into the actual Sanyo one. The Sanyo one, you've got to kind of clip them. These you don't. I prefer this, this is really good. Uh, and then channel two here, right here, this goes to the speed controller, right here. And then the speed controller is a Reedy SC600 slash BL, which I really like. It's a very good speed controller for the money. It's reliable because it's Reedy. And then it's also uh, very good uh, for the brushless motors. This is not a censored one, this is a sensorless. This is, this is for sensorless brushless motors, okay? So this is the motor I decided to put in the hot shop, which is the Reedy 540 SL. So 4,900 kV Reedy motor, this thing's gonna fly. The hot shop will surely be hot. Um, so this kind of shows you the wiring. So the way it works here, the wiring, always line up the middle wire here to the middle wire of the electronic speed controller. And then the steering always goes into channel one of the receiver. And then the electronic speed controller always goes into channel two, okay? And then you've got the two power cords. You've got the positive and the negative of the speed controller. And this has also got a Deems connector, which I really like because the dummy proof. And then the battery I bought is the Gens Ace right here. And it's 5,000 Ma and it's a, uh, a LiPo battery, a 2S, so it should be a, a really good battery. I've got these in all my cars. I really like these batteries. Uh, they seem to last long, about 45 minutes. Uh, now I'm gonna put the new suspension arms on the, uh, the front gearbox. So let's do that. So here is the original front uh, uh, wishbone arm suspension system from the Hot Shot. Uh, here's a shock absorber right here right there, I might use parts of that. And then here are the old arms here, uh, but they're pretty beat up. I'm gonna replace these arms with new ones. Uh, and then also on the hot shot, um, had some weak parts to it, some very weak parts that it kept needed to replace and replace and replace. And that is these triangular things here. And then these little hubs right here that kind of activate the steering right here. It would always snap in this location. You see where the JB Weld is right here? So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to replace these with something better. I'm gonna build back better. Just like the Bionic Man, the $6 million man. We will build, but we'll build back better. So what I've done is I've ordered these uh, new hubs. These are aluminum hubs by um, aluminum hubs. 
by a company called uh, Jazz Rider, okay? And they make parts for a lot of Tamiya and uh, lots of aluminum parts or aluminium parts. And I got these in black. So these will be my new steering hubs here for the front wheels. And they're gonna be less likely to break because they're made out of aluminum. And just to prove it to you, yeah, sounds like metal on metal, doesn't it? Yeah, so these are gonna be a lot better. So look forward to putting these on. Well, here are the old uh, shock absorbers here. As you can see, they were painted blue, like the rest of the car. I'm gonna replace the plastics of this and put it on the new arms that we've just built. Uh, but first I've got to take this apart. And also I've got to take the rear shock absorber apart as well and put it on the new plastic parts that I bought. Let's do it. So I've cleaned out the uh, shock absorber here and I've cleaned out all the old oil which is probably oh, maybe uh, 35 years old oil. So uh, I'm going to put some new oil in here and I've ordered this off um, eBay which is hop up options and it's uh, Tamiya oil and I've went for the medium. It's available in soft, medium, hard. I wanted a kind of a medium suspension. So we're going to put this new oil into the new canister of the shock absorber.
was messy. Um, well, I've got the front and rear shock absorbers redone. They look like brand new. Uh, they probably are pretty much brand new. The, all the old parts have gone except for the metal bits. But all the red stuff is new. Remember it was blue before. But um, let's see. Oh yes. Oh yes, that looks really good. I would say that is medium weight oil. Medium weight oil. Let's see, let's try this one. Oh yes. Yes. This one's good too. Good. I'm pretty happy with the medium weight. I think that's going to work really good on our dirt track. Okay, let's put it on the uh, chassis. So this is uh, quite a tricky operation. I am uh, adjusting the motor into the hot shot so that the pinion gear will easily rotate the gears of the uh, transmission here, on the rear transmission. And you do this by adjusting these two screws here. I had to put a little spacer on this one in order to make it work, but I just got to tighten them up here. There you go. Ugh. Make sure you tighten them up real good because otherwise the wheels would chew each other inside there. We don't want that. So now, let's see. This is a big test. Are you ready? We want these to rotate right here. So let me turn this on here. I'm gonna turn this on. Turn on the transmitter first. And then I turn on the receiver. Oh, sounds good. Everything is moving. So here we go. Let's see if it rotates. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! It's alive! It's alive! Yeah, so, reverse. Yeah, look how, just look how fast those axles are going. That's inside a hot shot. So it sounds like everything is meshing just nicely and that's what we want. So here we are. This is the front gearbox right here. It's all assembled with the front suspension here. Uh, kind of tricky getting everything to fit, but managed to get it to work and it's all together. So this piece, along with the rear gearbox here, which is still attached to all my electronics, uh, it will sit something like this, like this on the table here. Uh, and then what we've got is we've got this member right here. And this is the, uh, the rod that goes from the front gearbox to the rear gearbox and makes it into a four wheel drive buggy. How about that? So this goes into the front like this. And you see when I twist this, there you go. The, the uh, little spinning the wheel hubs will spin here like that. And then this end here will attach to this gearbox like so, hold on, like so, like this, and then I rotate that, the back wheel. So all together as one unit, here we have the hot shot without its uh, chassis right here in the middle. So now we're gonna attach the front gearbox and the rear gearbox to the chassis of the hot shot. And then we're gonna have what's gonna be the beginnings of a car. Okay, so here's the undercarriage of the hot shot and here you can see all the electronics. Here is the servo that controls the steering and I've got the hot shot adapter on that with the hot shot mounts. And then also I've got the Reedy electronic speed controller which fits in just perfect here, which allows for the extra height with the top portion of the chassis. And then I've got the, uh, the receiver here, the antenna-less receiver packed back here. So it's away from the server, which is what you want to do. And the battery leads will come out this way and the motor leads will come out this way. So hopefully when I put this on the bottom of the car, we'll have power to this little monster. Phew, at last, we have finished the Tamiya Hotshot chassis. And um, it was not easy. I don't know how I built this thing back when I was like 13 or 14 years old, I don't know. Uh, but this was very hard. I think one of the hardest things is, is because it was an old car and I'm restoring it. So it's a mix between old and new parts. And uh, be wary, some of these reissue parts don't fit the old parts. So I had to work on the car a little bit one week, and then order a part and then wait for about a week to get the new part in. It was just a very, very long process. But here we are near at the end. And the only thing left is um, 
What else? Looks like the body and, oh, the wheels. The wheels are next. So let's put the wheels on. Okay, the wheels. Um, the wheels were always an issue, or what I would say the, the hubs, but these little plastic little triangle bits right here, these were always an issue. They would always break. In fact, this is the old ones right here, and I kept. I remember keeping replacing these things. They're just, they're just a weak. They're no good, they're hopeless. Just pieces of plastic so brittle, they just don't work. And so even with the reissue, they didn't do anything. They just kept these. They should have changed this uh, to something different. So I went online and I found something. I found these lovely extra speed uh, hop-up parts here. These are the new hubs for the wheels and they're made out of aluminium. So they're not going to break. So I'm gonna use these on this hot shot. So let's take a look at these. Oh, they're wrapping these things up good. Here we go. Okay, I'll wrap these up here. Let's get some scissors. There we go. Okay, so you can see that these are black aluminum right here and they just will not break. They're made out of metal. See? And they're not the plastic broken ones here, but they're the same shape. So we can now put these onto the hot shot. So I've put these uh, nice aluminium hub adapters on the hot shot. They fit very nicely. And uh, I bought these new rims because the other ones are painted and all beat up. Just Tamiya hop-up parts. They're the exact same as the old ones. Um, this is for the front wheel. So let's put the front wheels on. And then here are the rear wheel hubs. And also, because the rub on my old one is kind of a little bit, it's kind of wearing out and it's kind of, well, it's wearing off in my hands. So I've got new tires too. Tamiya hop-up options. These are the front wheels. And then let's see what we've got. And then here are the rear tires here. So um, we're going to put the tires now onto these hubs and they can be a bit tricky. So let's try. Yay! I got the tires on the hubs. That was kind of tricky. Uh, lots of uh, uh, meshing of the rubber here onto the uh, the rims here and pushing and pulling, uh, as you could see. I don't think many people will show you putting tires on an old vintage uh, Tamiya, especially a Tamiya Hot Shot. Uh, these were not easy tires to put on the rims. But here you go. Here are the back wheels, which are a little bit thicker then the front wheels. And also I found out that there's arrows which show you which way the wheels are going. So I had to be careful which hubs to put on which tire. So uh, that's it, let's put them on the car. Okay, the wheels are now on the chassis. And uh, just good thing to check to see if everything works. And that is uh, if you rotate this wheel forward, like this, if you built the gearbox right on the front, this wheel should turn kind of to the left, which it, which it kind of doesn't. So I'm gonna check that. But anyways, this wheel here, it, it moves in the opposite direction here. That's called a differential, okay? And then when both wheels move, let's just see, like this. Let's see, hold on. Here we go. Oh yeah, see that? That's four wheel drive. 
So it works good. Yeah, excellent. This buggy is about to uh, get powered up and to need that, we need the battery. And I like the Gen's Ace battery, the 5000 Ma. Um, but I, I discovered a little problem with this battery. I love using these batteries. I really don't want any other battery. So I would like this to fit in the, in the hot shot here. Okay, and it just won't fit. Um, I've tried, but the problem is these existing holders right here just won't fit this square pack in here like this. It just, it just won't fit in, right? With the, with the holder that goes over here. This is the holder right here. And, and it just it just won't work. Uh, so I searched high and low on the internet, into the deep internet, and I found these. And these are aluminum or aluminium battery holders made for the hotshot. So this here would take place of this little piece right here. It's stronger, it's squarer, um, it's, it's, it's blue, I wish it was black, it only came in blue. I don't know why they don't think of matching the colour scheme to the hotshot when they make something for the hotshot. Very strange. Why in blue? I don't know. But anyways, I might spray paint this black later on, but for now I'm just going to put it on there. Uh, but this is a little flimsy piece here, it gets the battery all scratched up. So this I'm hoping will hold the battery in very nicely. And then it comes with these side pieces which take the place of these right here, which are made out of plastic. And then these are larger. So hopefully they will hold my battery in here better. So I'm gonna put these on and then see if it works. So fingers crossed that this is the solution. Okay, uh, here we go. We have fitted the new battery holder onto the hot shot and it fits like a charm so two thumbs up and i want to say a special thank you to uh redback racing who provided uh this aluminium battery holder or oh, i found it on ebay it is blue i wish it was black or silver or even red but you know i could always dip it in acid and take off the blue and just bear the uh bare metal i think that's what i'm gonna do uh but this fits nice. Look at this. Look how nice that looks. And this fits nicely with my Gen Ace 2S LiPo battery. Perfect fit. I think it's, and the hardware on this, very nice. Reverse it. And then you can see how it protects the battery more. Isn't that beautiful? Wouldn't that be good if it was silver? But anyways, it looks great. I am very, very happy with this new battery holder. And what an improvement that is over this little piece of um, resin and plastic or whatever this was, uh, graphite, I guess. Um, look, you can see how much more protection this now has compared to what originally came on the car. It's a lot more durable. It's gonna protect the battery from scraping and all that kind of stuff and it fits there perfect just only just really happy with it so now we've got the finished car and what i've done is i've pulled these wires back so when i put the body on it fits nice and snug and i've even added some metal posts where the aerial used to be so the body can grab onto those posts so it's more secure and those are actually a little piece of thing that will pop the suspension on the old uh, hot shot parts left over so that's the good thing about probably um, uh, doing this is you've always got parts left over and I've got parts that I can replace too. So it's, all, it's not all just a bad thing, it's a good thing too. So I think this has been very much worth it. Um, on the battery side of things, I've kept everything snug here, fastened everything with these little black zip ties to keep the wiring out of the way. And so all we're left now is to put the body on. Let's do this. So, I cheated a little bit. I actually painted the body, cut it out, put the stickers on and everything, of decals, um, off camera, just because it's a little hard to film when you're spraying and you've got your nozzle on and everything and uh, to protect yourself. And um, it's all done and ready to be put on the buggy itself. 
So um, let's do it. For any guesses what color? So here's the old one. As you know, it was painted orange. <laughs> and my original one was red, just like the box art, but this one um, was at the time painted orange, this body here, because I went to Auburn University and um, it's all cracked and everything, but I might try to repair this body with some more tape and everything so I can use it for bashing, you know. Uh, so anyway, put this to the side and then we're gonna pull out the new body and I decided to paint the new body pink. <gasps> oh, but it matches the wall back there. It matches the wall. Anyway, I painted it pink, put all the decals on it and I think it looks super. And then I think this will go nicely with the red parts. Uh, might even go okay with the blue. I did this Tamiya sign here, it's blue. So I might not even uh, change this with this body on. But anyway, we've got the pink body and then here's the pink wing. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the wing on. And generally to put the wing on, here's a little tip for you because if we just put the wing on as it is, they've got these little clips, like the body clips here just on, on, on this way it holds the wing right here. So you need to put spaces on like these right here before you put the wing on and then screw it in so that that way these body clips don't pierce through the stickers. So there's a little tip for you on that. So let's get on with it and put the body on. At last, it's finished. We have now got a brand new, old, redone, revamped, souped up, hot shot. The project is done. My monster is done. Dr. Frankenstein has built his monster. Uh, I'm pretty proud of this thing. Um, it looks great. Um, we've got um, taken something back from my childhood and and bring it back to life just emotionally. It brings a little tear into my eye, but it's it's quite an achievement here. Um, I must have been a lot better as a kid at building stuff because this was a big challenge for me. Um, it was not an easy project combining the old with the new. Uh, screws didn't work, I had to do some dremeling on the chassis, just all kinds of things I had to do in order to make this work, but it's done and I'm pretty proud of this thing. So um, what we've done, just to kind of go over everything that we've done on this, is uh, we've put in a brushless reedy motor in here. Um, we've got a LiPo 2S battery from Gen Ace, which I like to use in all my cars, as I keep saying. Um, also, we've got a reedy servo, which has got all metal parts in it. It's a very good high torque servo. Be great for this four wheel drive buggy here. Uh, we've also got a um, the new receiver, which is a little receiver thing. So it would pick up this nice MTS transmitter right here. And then we also got the uh, team associated Reedy uh, electronic speed control. So there's no aerials coming from this. Um, it's all fits like a bug snug, like a bug snug, snug bug bug, like a bug snug in a rug. Is that it? I don't know. But anyway, it all fits in here just, 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 just fine. Uh, with slight modifications. Um, but that's what we've done to this car. There's a few other things I would like to explain that I did not really uh, tell you in the video. And that is the front suspension here. These uh, cars are famous for the front suspension, kind of pushing them down and then they don't pop back up, okay? Well, I've modified the suspension slightly. What you can see here, this spring has been tightened, okay, to be a little bit more um, powerful in bringing the car back up. But I've put this 5 8 of an inch hex nut on here to kind of tighten up this spring here. And then what this does is when I press it, hopefully, or it will, because I've tried it already, it will pop back up. So if I press it, there we go, look at that. Perfect, because it did used to just do that. And then it would stay down, but now, oh, there it goes, it pops back up. And also I tightened up the rear suspension, so this works perfect too, look, it pops back up. So no bottoming out on this hot shot anymore. But anyway, trick up, little trick, 
If you add one of these in here, simples, it will make it where your front suspension, uh, suspension, the front suspension will work a lot better. Okay, uh, but that's it. So the only thing left to do now is to take this to the dirt oval and see how it performs. Let's do it. To the wheels. Arc Escapes reviews. Arc Escapes builds. Arc Escapes modifies RC testing around the track. Arc Escapes discovers what they boast and what they lack. Steering cars remotely. Building better machines. Testing cars around the track. Remote wheel spinning dreams. Radio control. Little cars that rock and roll. Race them in the dirt. Race them on the sand. Place them on the road, any surface on the land. That's gonna do it. <laughs>